Really excited to be joined today for another edition of this film room series by Cheyenne Sellers from over at University of Maryland. First and foremost, Shy, how are you doing? I'm doing well. I can't complain. Hey, we like to hear that. September is, uh, you know, can be hit or miss weather-wise and, and kind of keeping up with everything. Um, have you guys started back up school-wise yet in Maryland? Yeah, we're back in session right now, so it's not too bad. I only have class Tuesday, Thursday, which is great. Okay, you lucked out with the schedule. Damn, how did you finesse that? <laughs> uh, just been trying to work out, you know, maybe passing my classes and it makes it easy for <laughs> senior year. Kind of coming out of the summer too, obviously. It's kind of wild to think about you being a senior, recognizing this is, you know, last year. I don't know if you remember, but like we caught up, shoot, like I think first month of your sophomore year. So it's been, it's been a minute, but it doesn't feel like it's been that long. So, you know, kind of knowing like, you know, you're coming into this final year, Obviously, a lot of excitement, which we'll get into, but um, have you been able to kind of sink, let that sink in a little bit, or is that something that hasn't hit you quite yet? No, it's definitely sunk in. Um, obviously, um, being here for four years, I feel like not many people can say that. Um, I never take it for granted, and I'm grateful for you know my journey here. Yeah, no, definitely. It's a, it's kind of wild just speaking on, on timing and everything, because my cousin that you used to babysit is at OU now. And I saw her first going out pictures over the weekend. I was like, oh, I'm old. Like, I'm cooked. <laughs> like, like, how is this happening? Like, I remember this dude being born. Like, where, what are we doing here? So exactly. Like, just kind of watching the way everything happens timing-wise is so wild. Absolutely. Um, you know, especially reflecting on this last year, too. Um, have you been able to, like, really just, like, kind of, again, like, look back on what this last year was, especially, like, a big leap in, in growth and development? um especially as the year went on like have you kind of been able to let that sink in and, and and what it was like and kind of how you want to build off of it um yeah last year um it was in Maryland um it wasn't the Maryland standard and you know I've definitely been able to take that in and be able to pivot and figure out how we can be better how I can be better um I'm not really in into much of like how much I was scoring and stuff like that it doesn't really affect me. I'm more upset about the numbers dropping on the other side, but um, uh, thankfully the staff this year did a great job of recruiting and getting kids in that, you know, want to be here, want to fight, um, want to compete. And I can tell you practice has been all competing, all competing, all competing. Um, so I'm just really excited that, you know, people get to see a different side of Maryland this year. Um, I wouldn't take us too lightly. Um, you know, I feel like we we have added a lot of depth, a lot of size, a lot of athleticism. Um, you know, people say that we were quote unquote missing, but um, I think we found the right pieces this year. Yeah, no, I know you were active on Twitter early on in the portal, just being like, just wait, guys, it's happening. It's coming together. How active were you in terms of like, you know, kind of playing a part in in helping recruit people to to come join for this next year? Yeah, I was definitely um, very active in the recruitment process. Uh, reaching out to people on social media, checking in with them before they came on their visits, um, checking in with them after, um, you know, and they've all, all had a lot of questions and I've answered them truthfully, um, the good and the bad, because uh, I know a lot of people, not only in the transfer portal, but when you're getting recruited out of high school, that there can be some kind of facade and um, these coaches, you know, it's their job to get you here, and um, not everything is one hundred percent truthful in the recruitment process. But I did, I did my best job of um, telling them what it's going to be like, so when they come here, they're not surprised, and I don't think they've been surprised at all. No, definitely, I love to hear that, and especially like you mentioned. I mean, seeing all of you know all the players who who committed and 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 are coming over, like that's very excited to see the squad come together this next year. Because like you talk about, I think versatility on both ends of the court is going to be pretty different. Um, and pretty special in terms of what it could be um, you know especially with that many new faces together obviously I think there's a lot in terms of figuring that out you know on the court but um, off the court what has that been like in terms of kind of fostering that because I know you took a big step as a leader this past year I imagine it's you know only that much more heightened from Brenda this coming year so what has that been like for you and kind of uh, figuring out how to bring this group together a little bit you know I'd say um, I always tell people I think of this team as like our when we went to Elite Eight my sophomore year, I think about this team like on steroids, like that team on steroids, like um, 
we were just able to click super naturally and never felt forced. Um, we all have the same things in common. Um, there, it's a really outgoing group. Um, I'm sure you'll see that when we play. Um, it, it really hasn't been too much of a struggle to get people to connect. Um, and then obviously like going on the foreign trip really helped um, just trying to bring people together and get people to know each other. Um, so that was really great. Yeah, I think it's pretty hard to have a group that isn't outgoing if Christina Dowsey is a part of it. So, um, <laughs> yeah, she's one of the funniest people I've ever met. So I'm excited to see you know all the content that you guys put out uh, off the court as well this year. Um, you know, going off that as well, in terms of looking at at being a pro someday, which I know is a goal of yours. Um, when you look again, like just kind of at your growth throughout the years, I think part of what's so both interesting, but also like one of the things I want to ask you about, like it feels like you've played a very different role every single year. And I imagine it's going to be different again this year as well. And I think that's kind of a double-edged sword because you have to do a lot of learning on the fly, but also you don't really get to get comfortable to a degree. Um, what do you think has been the biggest maybe learning process for you kind of throughout that and and what you've taken away from it so far? Um, I think just being patient. Um, as you mentioned, like I've had a different role every year and I've been able to adapt and that's something that, um, not many people can say that they can do, but um, just being patient and, you know, bringing people along with me and, um, you know, it's not, it's not always the easiest road of having to change roles a lot, but that's something that I can say that I do um, extremely well. I learn things on the fly a, a lot and I can pick up things very fast. And I think that's one of like my strongest attributes is just you know, when you get to the next level and obviously like I stay in talks with Diamond a lot and all that stuff, but um, they throw a million things at you at once, especially as a rookie. Um, and I, I, I've i never been phased by a challenge. Um, so um, I'm just excited to hopefully be blessed with an opportunity to do that. And yeah. Most definitely, especially having Breezy back on staff this past year. Did you kind of pick her brain a little bit? What was it like having somebody who's, you know, obviously a very high level pro right now, getting to have that kind of in your corner? Yeah, um, I definitely picked Bree's brain a lot. Uh, I also got to see her work out a lot as she was coming back through her Achilles. Um, you know, there's just a different level to it. And then also just being invited to the Kelsey Plum camp. Um, the first day I got to pick her brain for like 30 minutes straight. Um, so it was, um, you know, they they told me a lot of things that like I need to be ready for. And, you know, I mean, you can't get better experience than that. So that's that's what I was going to that's what I'm going to say. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, Brenda does not give you a schedule that lets you do anything other than learn on the fly in the most difficult way possible. So, you know, important to have as well. Um especially I mean your dad played pro coming up so how big was that as an influence for you as well in terms of kind of you know learning how to do things um you know not just like you know I think there's there's work and then there is there's working to be something at, at a higher level and it, there's a big separator so how big was that for you in terms of kind of feeling that out early on and, and getting a, a better understanding for what that looks like um he's definitely put a lot of things in perspective um you know, like going pro, it's not like, you know, college where you're guaranteed four years, um, you know, they're going to, guess what, you may be a role player, but, you know, we're still going to love you. It's, it's it's a different breed when you go to the, the W, um, you know, you're playing with somebody's family, you're playing with somebody's food on the table. So I think it's obviously just um, a different battle that you can't really understand and fully grasp to you there. And I think I've been blessed with the father that's been through it so I can semi understand it, mm -hmm. but um, he's been more so there for me and like things that have happened and tell me that like, it's going to happen everywhere. I mean, you're not the first one. You're not the last one. Um, so I've, I feel like I've gotten a better uh, understanding of just certain situations that happen and how to deal with them. For sure. Yeah. Cause I think like, Honestly, like everybody looks at, you know, being a pro is just strictly playing the games. And I think part of what is the most difficult for a lot of people to to come into league for is like, no, like 95% of being a pro is figuring out how to do everything else when you're not playing games. And that's the stuff that sets you up to 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 find that development and become consistent. Cause I think consistency is probably the biggest thing you can find as a pro. Um, because a team needs to rely on you to do something every single night. Otherwise, you're not getting playing time, kind of like you mentioned. Um 
But going off that too, like you said, I was I was going to ask about Diamond. Um, what is maybe the biggest thing you've taken away from Diamond? Obviously, she's kind of gotten to see a lot of different things in the league early on as well. What's maybe the thing that stuck out the most from her about you know what her experience has been like and kind of uh, what you might take away from that? I think Diamond is probably one of the hardest working people I've ever met. Um, through any injury, anything that she's gone through, like she's ready to work 110%. We had PT recovery on the court whatever it may be um so I think just like picking her brain a lot of just trying to understand you know what is it like um how are you doing it you know she's not playing right now so it's like how are you handling that and I could say that girl's 110 percent a great teammate um she understands the game a lot she understands what it is and you know I'm grateful to know somebody like her who's willing to share that information um so yeah definitely um you know, going a little bit more towards uh, getting to the film, um, what, is there anybody that you would say that you've maybe modeled your game after or somebody that you think has like kind of a comparable skill set to you? Yeah, when I was a kid, I used to look up to Diana Taurasi and Sue Bird a lot. And I feel like I try to mesh my game in between both of them. And then, yeah, I mean, I feel like those are the main two. And obviously I was a LeBron fan coming up. Of course. Um, Really, Diana Tarazi and Sue Bird, just uh, Sue's ability to pass the ball and see everything. And then Diana's just will to want to win. And her, you know, some of her shot ability is, like, incredible. Um, so, you know, I just try to do a little bit of both, but then still make it myself. 100%. Yeah, no, I think you definitely bring some of their best qualities and emulate your own style as well. Um, you know, when you look at, just the pro game overall how much like how how big of a person are you in terms of like just watching film outside of your own tape to to get better like are you somebody who's like kind of always got the w on in the background just kind of always watch the nba or like what is that like for you yeah i definitely watched a lot of WNBA basketball um for a few years now i've been watching like consistently and you know i'm glad that it's getting the recognition that it deserves um because you know, it's an intense league, but it's also fun. I feel like people don't really realize they didn't realize how big it was and how fun it is to watch because they just wanted to not they just wanted to have any reason not to watch. Yeah. No, for sure. And I think part of what's so exciting about like getting to see where it's at and where it's headed is again, like players like you coming up, especially with you know the league continuing to expand the next few years. I think we just get to see a lot more roster spots and a lot more opportunities for people to develop here instead of having to always go over overseas. So there's a lot of excitement there. Um, you know, lastly, in terms of just looking at this coming year, what are the things that you most want to improve upon as an individual? Like, obviously, I know there's a lot of stuff you guys want to improve upon as a team, but when you're looking at your own development, you know, what are the things that, um, you know, you've put the most work on in the summer and, and that you're really hoping to take another step with this coming year? Uh yeah, um, obviously my three point percentage, and then my field goal percentage uh dropped last year, so I'm trying to get that back up. Uh, I feel like I'll be able to do that this year with this team, but mainly my three point percentage. Um, not many people knew, but I I tore two ligaments in my thumb. I was shooting the ball a pretty high clip at the beginning of the year, and then I messed it up against Niagara, and then I completely tore both of them in against Michigan. So it kind of really dropped my shooting percentage down but um I've gotten in the gym a lot to make sure it's back to being consistent and you know I'm able to knock down those threes and even the tough contested ones as well so um I'm, I'm excited to be able to show that this year definitely that actually makes a lot of sense now that you say that because yeah that was one of the things I was going to ask you about because in general like I think understanding like field goal percentage like I totally get where you're coming from but also it felt like the level of shots you had to take and when and sheer volume is just like so different. Right. And it, it, it totally changes up things. And, but then also going off your thumb, um, cause I was going to ask, cause you started, you were taking like four or five threes per game at the start of the season. We're down to like round one, the last month of the season. That makes a lot more sense. Now if <laughs> I had two torn ligaments in my thumb, I would not be shooting the ball from deep either. Um, so yeah, I mean, speaking on Maryland connection too, it's a uh, fun, but also not fun. So I know Alyssa Thomas pretty well. Um, I am the only person in the WNBA other than her with two torn labrums currently. So it's uh it's funny because you, you know it's the little things you think about. It's not even like it hurts. She just like can't shoot, right? Like it just changes the arc, everything you can do with it. So understandable for sure. Um lastly on that though, 
I think what's so interesting about your game is like you are, I think you're kind of the definition of versatility, right? Which is a lot of what we're going to dive into in film. But where do you feel most comfortable at on the court? Like, I think, again, like you are comfortable in a lot of different areas, but I wanted to ask you just in general, like, where do you feel best on the court? Like, obviously, you played a lot of PG this last year, slotted in more at the wing earlier on. But but where have you kind of felt at your best? Um, I feel like it just depends, you know, like you keep saying, I'm very versatile. And depending on what kind of defense the team is running is whether I feel more comfortable at the wing or if I feel more comfortable at the the one. Um, you know, I just love getting to the mid range and I love attacking the rim. Um, and you know, it creates a lot more options when you're able to score at all three levels. So I feel like that's kind of where I feel most comfortable. But yeah, really, I can feel comfortable anywhere. Yeah. No, absolutely. And I think, again, we'll I'll pull it up now. But I think part of what's exactly like you're talking about part of what's so fun about your game is you can really just kind of get it off in so many different ways um and that's really exciting at the next level obviously brenda does a phenomenal job of of developing pros and playing at a pro kind of style here which i think is to your advantage because like you know people get to see what you can do already like i think so often if you pull up what somebody's doing you know like a team will just hammer certain kinds of ways of playing but i feel like you guys play like okay, well, we'll run handoffs, but there's also ball screens. And then we're going to do stuff playing out of the post too. Like you throw a lot at people to work with. And I think, again, it just really fits your game and what you can do. Before we dive into the film, I'd like to take a moment to thank our sponsor for this video and series, State Champs. State Champs is a community-based streetwear brand with a brick and mortar sports coffee shop located in Kent, Ohio. Check out the link down below for a t-shirt collab we did, their catalog of apparel and accessories, and stop on by in person to catch a game and a cup of coffee as the WNBA postseason unfolds this fall. Um, yeah, so I want to start off with transition, because I think to me, like, one of the ways that I most enjoy your game and that I think is going to translate to the next level is what you can do in transition. So, like, automatically, it's just two-way playmaking for you. you. Make a play off the ball, get down court, paint touch, wide open three. Like, I think so often people like look at transition, they're like, it's simple, it's just transition. And I'm like, yeah, but exactly. Cause I think being a player like you, that's stuff that you can take to the next level for sure. And yeah. like having those kind of baked in things outside of just playing in the half court is really huge. Yeah, I think just also like to the transition point is like it's easy to run transition, but it's making sure that everybody's in the right spot or knowing where they are. Like obviously. I knew down the court the whole time that I was going to throw the ball to Brene because obviously everyone's going to load up to Jakia and Allie running down. Breeze was going to space out and two people were trailing me, leaving me wide open. And obviously we all know that Brene loves to shoot three. So that was kind of an easy choice. Yeah, Nay open from three was was pretty easy choice last year for <laughs> sure. Um, no, that's interesting to hear too. Like just saying like you knew it as soon as you get the ball, you know that that's coming. And then it obviously plays out and how you kind of see things and, and make those reason attack. So next one is similar, but you get a little bit more ball pressure this time. Um, I have to say, too, would you say your behind-the-back dribble is probably your your, your go-to? It, it really depends, honestly, yeah. because I love to I do love to wrap the behind-the-back, but it can get really tricky when someone's pressing into your chest because if the ball slips, it's it's a done deal. You're not getting the ball back. Absolutely. So I sometimes i got to be a little bit careful with it. Yeah, uh, no, definitely. But I think it's good to have in your back pocket for sure, because you can get it off either way. Like so many people are like, especially with their combos, they're going to be more one handed, but you can get it left or right. Um, but again, just drawing to getting it to Nate. This one, did you know Nate was getting this one too? I saw Brie slide over at the last second and then I saw her set that flare. So yeah, once the girl stunted and tried to collapse on me, Renee it was slipped over. that one. And it was a pretty easy, another easy choice to hit Renee in the corner. Absolutely. Um, yeah, this one too. I just like this one because so often I think when a team, you know, this is off, it, I clipped it poorly. So you can't, it's not automatically readable that it was off of a make for, for Mason, but you just automatically push and transition, find faith. Obviously I think, you know, Brenda really prioritizes playing with pace, but especially like making a read that fast, like a half second after somebody scores, um, how big is that something you've kind of always had, or is that something that's really developed over your time in Maryland? Uh, you know, my AU coach really loved to play in transition. We had to get the ball down in like three seconds or less. Yeah. Um, so I've always kind of been pretty good at the kick ahead passes. Uh, 
I think we do a good job of getting out, but I always tell them, like, if you have your man beat, even by half a step, I'm throwing the ball, so be ready to catch it. Yeah. Um, And off that, too, like, how is – because I think I've always seen – from the outside, it seems like Brenda's um, pretty uh, lenient, might be the wrong way to put it, but, like, is willing to have some turnovers. Like, how much do you kind of balance wanting to be really aggressive and make, you know, those kind of home run plays, but also acknowledging, okay, there might be some turnovers here? Um, I try to balance it. Like, if I see that you're open, but I saw it a little too late, I might be hesitant, and I'll just call him to see, like, I'll come up to you and say, like, I saw you. It was just really late, and I didn't want to risk it. Uh, there are times where I do throw a terrible pass, and it, it turns over. You know, sometimes she has some firm words for me. and uh, <laughs> But sometimes she's like, I saw what you saw. It was just a little too late. So um, I balance it. I try to balance it pretty well. Sometimes I'll I'll take the ownership, but sometimes I'm I'm, I'm going to risk it and hope it pays off. Yeah, no, you have to, right? Like, especially playing as more of a team that's out in transition a lot. Um, you know, I think, that honestly, like, some sometimes it's just like driving, in my opinion. I feel like if you are not assertive as a driver, not aggressive or assertive as a driver, then you can cause more accidents than when you are really assertive. That might not be, like, the best analogy possible for talking about turnovers, but I think it stands. <laughs> um and this here too, uh, I think another part that always stands out about your game, even when you are off the ball in transition, I think you're so good at being a threat. Um, just quick trail three, I think throughout the season and just throughout your career, you've shown like the ability to be really effective as a trail player. Um, Cause again, like it, it, it seems small and watching it, but like, okay, that makes it that much harder to defend. Cause if somebody else goes down, gets a paint touch and you're trailing play, that's easy money. Yeah, during the summer, I worked on that a lot last summer and this summer, but speaking to last year, worked on that a lot last year. Uh, obviously, this is towards the beginning of the season. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, I repped that shot a lot, so I felt comfortable taking that. And then, obviously, like my team did a good job of just trying to get me the ball in a position where I could be successful. 100%. Um, and then off that, too, I think one of my favorite parts about your game is the way that you're able to just attack, right? So you get – you know, this uh, kind of token pressure from Nebraska. Um, and you saw a lot of smaller guards this year, too. And I think what, one of the things that was really fun watching was how differently you, you, you found ways to attack those smaller guards because you have the height, you have the length, and you have a tight handle. So, okay, how can you, you know, use that against them? And I think even though you don't get the basket here, um, you had one of the highest free throw rates in the country last year. I'm not sure if you were aware of that, but, like, very good at getting to the line. Was that kind of a conscious effort? Or is that something that just kind of came came to you, like, naturally? I feel like it kind of came naturally, but I'm also, like, a player that likes to use my body a lot. And I feel like I was a mismatch problem in a lot of ways in the Big Ten because Absolutely. you could put a small guard on me and risk me posting them up, or you could put a bigger guard on me and risk me blowing by them. And I'm not the most explosive or fastest player, but – I try to be very efficient with my movements and I do a lot of film of like trying to work on people's tendencies. So uh, yeah, I feel like I just kind of, I try to play to my advantage. I I like you pointing that out. Like not, I think you're a good athlete. Cause like you mentioned in terms of like, uh, like your shiftiness, I think at your size is like pretty rare. Right. Um, so to me, it's like not, you know, it's not your typical like speed or whatever, but I think having what you have at your size is like, again, like a, it's a real athletic advantage, even if it's not. Or traditional one so but it's cool hearing you voice like okay I need to take advantage of angles I need to see these things because I think again like when you talk about getting to the next level that's a really important aspect to know and understand already and in, in being able to see and take advantage of those things yeah and then another part that I really love too because like again I think so often people think of passing just as like all right I'm out and pick and roll you're really good at just connecting plays even if it's just like it could be anything in the half court, like broken, whatever, like you just see stuff and make the right play happen quickly. Um, and I think again, like when you talk about players slotting in playing at the wing, like so much of that is making things easier on your teammates. Right. And keeping plays going and you will really excel at doing that. Yeah. I'd say I'm pretty good at like, if something falls apart, I'm pretty good at still playing basketball or in transition. If, you know, it didn't work out how we planned it pretty good at making the extra pass but um you know it helps a lot when people make it easier on you like Jakia saw that they were going to guard too so she just kind of slipped it which made the pass 10 times easier for me so 
definitely. I want to run through your shot mechanics too a little bit because it's funny because like you talked about, I think giving that that extra coloring from talking about the Niagara game was was important. But also going off that too, I feel like your shot is just a lot better than percentages maybe indicate at times. I know you mentioned wanting to get those percentages up, but I feel like, I mean, you always get guarded like a really high level three point threat. And as I think you should, to be honest, but like, um, I just want to like walk through your mechanics really quick. So like, tell me like kind of when you look at yourself, shoot, like what is, uh, you know, how did that kind of come about? What was, what was like the process of you getting to where you're at as a shooter? I know you're more like kind of, um, you know, obviously right hand and getting, well, it's like, this is in the way, um, let me back it up obviously right-handed but I think like when you get to see the, the you know set shots kind of catch and shoot stuff like that you get to see somebody's cleanest looks and and what they're really trying to get to yeah um I tend to have a more not narrow base but a typical base of just like you know feet shoulder width apart but I also tend to like my like you can see my right foot is a little bit forward mm-hmm. than my left which I tend to feel like a little bit more balanced um Sometimes, you know, the shot feels good like that one, and I just kind of start back badly. But there's other times where I just try to stay, stay in my shot, um, especially if it feels a little bit wonky. I'm praying to the gods that uh, <laughs> it falls. But, yeah, you know, there's different ones. I feel like this one, I think I stick. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, especially, too, like, watching you, I think a lot of times, like, you're most comfortable doing left foot plant, right foot follow, and then into your shot. I feel like that's, at least to me, that's what stood out in going back through yeah. and watching. Um Especially, like, I feel like you had to take a lot more off the dribble this year, right? So, like, when you look at that, how much does that change up, you know, how comfortable you feel in the shot? Like, obviously, I think you're very comfortable getting that pull-up too, right? But especially, like, taking a pull-up three when you got a lot of switches, a lot of unders on on ball screens this year. You know, how does that kind of adjust or or force you to adjust the way that you're taking a shot? And um, especially when so much of being a good shooter is, like, you know, wanting to take the same shot every time. Yeah, yeah. it puts a lot of pressure on your shot just because you have to speed up your shot a little bit because you are coming off the bounce. Um, it, it was definitely tough last year of like figuring out, you know, what's considered a good shot and what's considered not so good just because when you are taking stuff off the bounce, some of the stuff tends to be a little bit more contested than just a mm-hmm. catch and shoot, which is um, something I struggled with last year of just like being like, Am I being selfish right now, or am I taking a good shot? Uh, but you know, it comes with the lessons. I've kind of outgrown that of just knowing that I can. A lot of shots I take, I can, I can yeah. make. Um, and I think, you know, I'm a I'm a player that tries to make the best decision possible. Um, obviously not always perfect. Sometimes you do take a little wonky shot, um, but. You know, you got to live with it, and I feel like I've learned a way to live with it while still trying to make everyone else around me better. Yeah. Can you expand on that a little bit in terms of talking about, like, you know, not wanting to feel selfish? Because I think it's, again, like, when people are watching, you know, like this, like, just kind of getting the all-22 perspective, right? Like, I think it's easy to be like, oh, well, you know, all these these decisions are, are this and that, like, but it, you know, when you're in that, I feel like so often when you're just playing, when you're out, like, you're not making decisions, you're just playing. And yeah, you can break it down afterwards, but so much of it is muscle memory stuff, right? Um, so how do you kind of weigh that? Because again, like so much of, you know, being, you, I mean, you were a primary option last year, which is again, like that was a change for you. So like having to become a player who like, I need to command the defense every time I have the ball. Like if you don't take those shots from behind a ball screen, they're not going to come out and guard you. And then that changes how the offense can run. So how do you kind of like work through that in your head? Like you mentioned in terms of, you know, kind of having to find some comfortability in that last year. Yeah, I think I don't know, it was, it was honestly a really big struggle on my end. Um, you know, to the average fan um, who don't watch, that often or don't know much about being in that situation um some people thought I was shooting a lot some people didn't think I should have played 40 minutes some people thought that there's you know a different option that Brenda could have done um but when you're in that moment I feel like I would I, I was trying to do the best thing I could for my team and help us win and 
But a lot of the times, especially from people that know the game, who have been in college, who have been professional athletes, have been talking to me and saying, you know, you weren't taking enough shots last year, which necessarily I don't feel is true. I'm very comfortable with taking, you know, eight to ten shots my first two years. I think I lived in the three to five range, which is, which is great because I could be efficient. Um, but I, I – I did catch, I call them bombs when the, there's not a lot of time in the shot clock left. And, uh, you know, I am the one that has to shoot it at the end of the shot clock. It just, it's, and honestly, it's a big respect thing that people want you to have the ball at the end of the shot clock. But, um, you know, I, I, towards the end of the season, I kind of started taking it with a grain of salt. Um, I deleted all my social media platforms. I deactivated a lot of my social media platforms um, just because of the nonsense. and. Um, you know, you don't, you don't really ever understand it until you're in it, and um, not many people can say that they're in it, so I started to, that's when I feel like we started to pick back up here, obviously, at the Big Ten tournament, we did really well, um, but, you know, I took it with a grain of salt. Yeah, no, I think that's really great insight, because, I mean, you only know what you know, and you only know what, I mean, people only know what they see, right, and they only know what, what they can be around, but, like, you know, again, I think people lose sight of, like, a game is five percent of what you're really doing in terms of actually being a basketball player and there's just so much more that goes into it so I think that that makes a ton of sense and not just saying this to gas you but I think like you really figured out so much throughout the season I think part of what was so fun in watching you play is you saw you like you, yes there were some bumps in the road but I think you saw so much of that growth and um, ability to continue to find patience like to me I think you finding patience down the stretch of the season not that you didn't have it before but like Again, going from being a player is like, okay, I'm catching on the wing and I can play with patience to more like, all right, I have the ball in my hands with 30% usage and I have to figure out how to play with patience all the time. That's a big jump. And I think, you know, being able to find that throughout the year was really huge for you, particularly in like we're talking about here, like getting to, you know, big tens, closing out the year strong. Um, and I think, you know, that goes into right what we're talking about now, because I think obviously you can you can see even more by pulling out the numbers, but I think just in watching, like, your ability to play in isolation is stand out. Like you are so good at being able to, like we talked about, use angles, but also like figuring out how to use your height and and just everything in general to take advantage of good defenders. Like Celeste was Big Ten pl Defensive Player of the Year last year. She's a very good defender. But this is just like an elite play of, okay, I'm going to, like you got really good at posting and redriving, I felt like last year. Where early on in the year, I felt like it was a lot of straight line drives and sometimes you smothered your own shot. But then you got to the point where it's like, okay, I'm just going to use my shoulders. I'm going to get little dips in here and there. And you open yourself up at the rim so well as the year went on. Yeah, I feel like, you know, Celeste is a great defender. So, and you can see already the, like, how much of, like, how much they are in the gap in mm -hmm. that. Like, there's four Ohio State players basically touching the paint. Um, Clearly, that was on the scout for me. Um, yeah. But eventually, they have to back off because Brian Jakir is shooting at such a high clip at the end of the year. Um, and so I, I kind of just play with it. And it's all about change of pace, too. Like, I took a second to hopefully get Celeste to stand up, which she did. And then I got to reattack her. So that was kind of my plan. Also, I was not losing this game. So I was yeah trying to be a force to be reckoned with. Absolutely. And you were in this game. And one thing I want to hit on to you, just as like kind of a micro thing, I loved how you started getting into high gathers as the year went over too. like right when you're kind of dodging nail help here. I think so often like players get into trouble of like they try and sweep the ball low when they're coming through nail help. And that's just a recipe for disaster. So again, like using your height, using your advantages and getting to that. And that helps you like because that gives you momentum right into your finish, too. Um, and that's again big time and being more efficient and, and just getting closer to the basket. So yeah, it's just the continuation off that because it felt like I mean I think every single player <laughs> at Ohio State guarded you this game. It felt like, um, especially I mean they really want to put you on an island and then show help behind it too. So like when you're kind of preparing for a team like that, I know you said you came in here with you you weren't going to lose, but. When you know, like, okay, I'm going to really have to kind of play one-on-one -on -one in order to create a lot of advantages, how does that kind of change up the way that, that you approach things or, or, or go about playing in a game? Well, this game especially, um, 
Ohio State loves to dig, dig, dig. Um, so it, it, in my head, it made no sense for me to come in, come off the screen with Faith mm-hmm. and Jakia's right there, Face Man's right there, and Bree's man right there, versus just playing the double gap with JC and Ricky, which Brene's on the uh, three point line. So it, it, you're you're not gonna help off Brene, and if you do, you're dumb. Like we mm-hmm. just gotta kick it. So it kind of just put me on an island, which. You know, I think Rick is a great player, but um, I just knew I had the advantage, especially with the size. So I just kind of attacked it. No, 100%. Um, yeah, I think exactly like you're saying, you being able to hear you break it down is really cool. Cause yeah, like being able to like take advantage of rejects into into isolation and, and attacking defenders to again, like they're trying to put you on an island, but then you get find a way to put them on, on an island too and, and use your advantage against them, which is really big. Um, Another thing I want to ask about too. So right here, because again, like I think your ability to drive and put the ball in the deck at your size is something that really sets you apart. Um, and just again, like this is kind of like more of like what you 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 got looks more of in the last two years is okay. You get to attack off the wing. How much, like just again, like for for explaining to people who aren't used to doing it, how different does it make your footwork feel, your handle feel, just everything about attacking the basket feel when you're attacking off the catch as opposed to, you know, kind of creating out of a ball screen yourself? Attacking on the catch is just a lot a lot easier because a lot of times people are still rotating over from help side. And, you know, like in this time, they were late um, trying to match up with me. And then they ended up setting a big out on me, which was just a recipe for disaster, in mm-hmm. my opinion. Um, so yeah, I feel like you can be a little more quick, more explosive, you catch people more off guard when you're on the wing versus when you have the ball starting up and everyone's trying to load up. Um, you kind of have to move the ball and then hopefully it gets back to you where you can make a play. No, definitely. It's a great point. Um, and then, yeah, getting into, I believe now, yeah, one more ISO. Um, this one, I think you get to see your passing too. Cause I think so often people think of like isolation just for scoring, but I think you also got really good at creating, you know, with your eyes in isolation as well. Like, okay, as soon as you start to draw more people into the paint, all you have to do is find a cutter. And I felt like you can't play at Maryland without being a good cutter. So that opens up really well for everyone else. Um, But again, in terms of finding that, like, because like you mentioned, I think so much of being able to do that is like, you have to be a player willing to take a lot of shots or be a threat constantly in order to to be your best version of yourself as a passer too. how do you, again, like in terms of finding that balance and feeling it, like how do you, especially between passing and shooting, right? Like, obviously I think this one's like a pretty clear, like you have a good pass wide open for you, right? But um, especially when it's getting more into like, all right, well, I need to take this, you know, this 14 footer compared to like, all right, maybe I can move the ball or maybe there's a lane for me. How do you kind of balance that again? Um, it depends on spacing and where I feel like the advantage is. If, like this one, I kind of drove knowing, obviously I was going to be behind the backboard, but I, I saw Ali kind of creeping in, mm-hmm. especially because um, like their big didn't want to come out the paint. Um, So it kind of just made it a little bit easier, but deciphering of who's in where and who, what spots are the best, like um, I use Emily Fisher as an example. Like if she was on three-point line that year, I probably wouldn't have you know, I probably might have shot in the pull up because I she just wasn't shooting the best last year. Yeah. Which is fine. Obviously she's worked on that. But um just putting people in position where they can be successful or if I feel like I'm in a more successful position than them, I'm gonna take the shot. But if I feel like they have a better position that I can clearly see, then I'm gonna make the right pass. Definitely. And and you hit on an interesting part too in terms of like establishing that trust in a teammate's shot. Um, how do you, again, like balancing is maybe the wrong word, but like, um, you know, kind of finding that rhythm. Cause I think that's something that can ebb and flow throughout a year as well too. Right. Yeah. I think, you know, we all talk, we're all close. We're all teammates. Um, they talk about where they feel most comfortable at, where they feel like they struggle at. Uh, you know, sometimes I throw them the ball in a place that they don't feel comfortable and like, don't throw me the ball right there again. <laughs> and I take it and it's fine. Um, so I feel like, you know, we all talk about things that, you know, where we feel com- most comfortable at. And, you know, I feel like I try to do a good job of executing that. Definitely. Um, well, now, kind of like combining, you know, talking about isolation, 
is you mentioned post-ups earlier on. And I think, again, like one of the areas you really excel is being able to attack out of the post. Obviously, I think right here, again, just finding a cutter with your size, but you look at how many eyes are on you as soon as you get Celeste down on the block. And yeah, you see exactly why, you know, you're a threat there because everybody's looking at you. Um especially being able to use kind of more back to the basket stuff, but meshing that with your, with your ability to attack off the bounce um, was again, like, is that something that you feel like I've, like, I mean, I've watched you do post-ups quite a bit the last couple of years, but especially this year. Um, did you know coming into the year that, that that was going to be such a big part of your arsenal or was that something that kind of, you just felt out again throughout the year? Um, I knew it was going to be pretty big um, just because I knew I was playing more primary point guard this year. And um like I said, it caused a mismatch. And then, obviously, like, being one of the top people on the scout, like, everybody's heads watching me, even on one of the best teams in the country. Um, we all have lapses. Um, so I feel like I could I can execute a lot and get mm-hmm. my teammates a lot more easy buckets when I was in the post. Definitely. Um, yeah, going off that one, too, I think this is one of my favorite – baskets you had this season because I think you talked about earlier like you know just having angles footwork everything I think you showed a lot of being able to kind of create in a phone booth in the post this season like obviously you get the dig down here keep the ball high spin back and then I mean that's just tough (laughs) it was a good bucket Um, I think um, this game it was it was a tougher game um, but Ricky just, you know, threw her hips into me, and I was kind of getting pretty tired of it. Yeah. Um, and I feel like that was one of the more aggressive plays that I made that game. Um, and just being strong and just trying to go through it instead of worrying about the contact. So um, I feel like I did a good job right there. Yeah, no, absolutely. And going off that, too, like, you have a really good runner and floater. You shoot, like, around 40% on runners and floaters, which is is good. Um But how do you kind of like, again, like, I I think right here, like pretty easy, especially just where you end up with your footwork, like that's understandable floater area, but like balancing that too, of like, all right, I put my shoulder down and I try and finish this drive or I get into having this more of a floater shot. Like, how do you kind of balance that? How do you feel about your rim reads a little bit and kind of, uh, you know, what you, you know, is there anything you want to change up this season or, or where just kind of how that's continued to grow for you? It honestly just depends. Um. I know a lot of teams try to take charges on me um, when they're waiting under the basket. Um, but if I see them setting up, then I can kind of slow my body down of knowing when to take the floater and when not to. Um, if you're not much of a charge taker, then um, I'm definitely going to attack you and you know try to lay it up at the rim. But it also just depends on the height advantage that you have. Like, um, who do we play? Uh, let's just say... You know, South Carolina, um, I still attack, I attack them pretty well, but, you know, I'm not going to try to lay the ball up against Camila Cardoso. Like, that's just comical. Yeah. Um, so just floating the ball up or trying to get an advantage of using the rim to protect me, I feel like that's where I try to, you know, be a little bit more crafty at. No, definitely. I think it'll be really fun this year, too, because now, like, uh, with the Pac-12 schools coming in, I feel like, you know, the Big Ten's not really like a true post league, at least this last year. There were a couple teams, like obviously Sarah over at Wisconsin and quite a few players who who were that. But I think like, you know, SC and UCLA are definitely going to be like different in terms of how, you know, how teams have to approach them and, and play against them uh, on offense. So it'll be fun to watch. You meant uh, like obviously, you know, going to, to, pl- to Plum's camp. Um, did you get to talk to her about rim reads at all? Because I think in terms of somebody who's like grown and like seen how they attack the basket from rookie year on, that's like one of the best people to watch for sure. Yeah, I mean, obviously just like being there in the environment and seeing like how Kels like puts in the work and like just different things. Like she has probably one of the best like slow steps like I've ever seen. Um, she got pretty much all of us on it. Um, yeah. Being able to control her body and you know, make the defender like miss time things, and that that kind of leads to where her successes are at the rim, especially at an undersized guard. Of like, um, once you throw out people's timing, that's where you can succeed because um, obviously they can block it all they want, but if they don't have the correct timing, it's just gonna be a little bit more difficult for them to do that. So 
um, yeah, I definitely got to, you know, see a different side of that for sure from her. I love that. Um, last thing on post those too, because this was another just really good one. I think one of the things that always stands out about the, especially when you were most effective in post ups, right. Is like how you get into them. Cause like, obviously right here, it's often Iverson and into a ball screen, but decide to reject it and then get to the post from there. And I think like, again, so often people just think of the post as dump the ball into the post. Right. And you know, you do a really good job of just like setting yourself up with this one and then being able to attack from there as things kind of clear out again with that high gather too, which I really like. And then that's just, yeah, it's really tough. Um, I think because, again, like like we talked about with your shot, like, I mean, you, you're a really good free throw shooter. You're what, around like 86 percent this last year. Um, and you have that kind of touch inside the arc, too. I think just in general, like when I look at things from a development perspective, like when you have like all those kind of indicators of, of touch and everything, I'm just like I'm that's why I feel like you you are like a 40 percent three point shooter to me. Um, you're on that track for sure. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's pretty simple just walk, working people into the post. I mean, it's like sometimes you can get, I'm not, I'm not really going to be posting up that often like that. So if I can create my way of getting down into the post and creating an advantage, I feel like, um, you know, things go a little bit smoother. Yeah, no, especially even if like, you know, even if you're doing something less, I think it's almost more important to be so efficient at doing something, right? Because like, you know, if you get an opportunity, you got to make the most of it. And yeah, being able to do that is big time. Um, so now I want to go into a couple of just pick and roll reads in general. I think all of them I pulled from are from the same game because they th Nebraska threw like everything at you in this game, right? In terms of just like sheer different stuff. I love this one because I think this game was really good at showcasing again, like patience. Like I think your patience out of ball screens, both as a scorer and as a passer was really big. Like, you know, you have two on you just waiting for the slip to set up. And then that's, easy money especially with the exit coming off the other side too because like again i think people will watch this and they'll be like all right slips open right now throw it but if you don't wait for the back side to clear out then that's somebody waiting right there to tag up so i think again yeah. like i just love the timing on that play from you for sure So I want to, yeah, I want to pull this one because obviously you get into your midi, which is big. And they had, they had Darian White defending you early on in the game. And that was interesting. She's just so small compared to you. But I think that's part of what's fun. Like you get to see, all right, these are the mismatches you get to take advantage of. What makes you decide that you're going to reject this one and, and instead kind of go back? Because um, again, like they threw a lot of different kinds of pressure at you in this game. Um, you know, Nebraska is a team that loves the hard hedge. Mm -hmm. um, they try to buy time for their guards to get back through. Um, she kept cheating the screen every time and trying to get her foot over. So once she stuck her foot over Emily's foot, I knew I could turn it back and it would kind of trip her up a little bit. Um, and then I'd have her on my hip the whole time and she was obviously smaller than me. So it kind of just made it easy to elevate over her. Definitely. Um, especially on your pull-up too. I feel like you're just so comfortable being able to get off one to two dribbles um, to get to that. And then again, like you just look at the height difference. Like I think when we talk about release point, like that's where you're at releasing and she's contesting as much as she can. Yeah. Like that's when you talk about mismatches, like I think that's about as crisp of an image as you can get for, for what a mismatch looks like. And then this one, so you hedge and then kind of hold out the hedge a little bit and then hit a pass over top. Um, so on this one too, like in terms of like how you handle this, like what are you seeing? What are you like looking for when you're attacking this and 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 what makes you decide to to kind of go through what you're doing? The problem with hedging is that you're basically leaving five on four. Um, and there was no one to cover Allie because Jaquiel was right there. Um, the girl on the bottom should have technically tagged Allie and tried to guard mm -hmm. two. The pass really should have never gotten there. But um you know, I just made a great read. Um, Allie did a good job of going to the block and rolling to the opposite block um, and realizing she was open a little bit later than she realized. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, it's just kind of playing off people, seeing other defenses. Um, that's just the one problem with hedging is that you leave a lot open on the roll. 
Yeah, no, absolutely. Especially because like if you don't have any kind of backside tag or you have a guard down low, like I don't know how much you've watched like the Connecticut Sun play, but I think that's yeah. that's been interesting to watch for them because they play they've like toned it down a little bit this year, but especially last year when Bree was out, they played like so aggressive, right? Yeah. But then the issue would be like, all right, well, if we have our point guard is is tagging backside, then it can be kind of a mess. And you know, seeing how teams like have to play around with it is is interesting. I feel like so often it's like, you know, a team having a hedge in your back pocket is like a nice thing but having to do it all the time is rough because yeah. if you have a player like you if you can make a skip pass then r.i.p so um especially like you know just looking at your passing too what was the biggest because i think like obviously you you showed a lot as a passer your first two years but just like the sheer volume of what you had to do as a playmaker this year took us such a big jump right what was what do you think was like the biggest adjustment you had to make or thing that you had to kind of um think through as a playmaker and, and and getting more comfortable with that? I think timing and just reading where the defense is. Um, timing just because I had to make the right pass at the right time, which, you know, is not always perfect. Mm-hmm. And then um, just also, like, people being open behind me a lot of the time. But – my vision is like this, not backwards. Yeah. So it was it was definitely like trying to read the defense of like, okay, Allie just rise. Her man's in the paint. She's probably going to be open behind me. Um, I feel like that was definitely a big learning jump because I'm always looking forward and where I can pass out of here. But sometimes the backfield is the best option because they're wide open. Yeah. Yeah, so how do you kind of like – stomach that is wrong way to put it but like i'm very much somebody who like i don't like to make a decision and i don't feel 100 confident right so like when you think okay that might be open but i can't see it how do you kind of like rep that out in your head of like getting to a point of feeling comfortable with that well they started they started to help me out by just like literally like yelling my name like yell your name yell my name if you're really wide open especially on like the roll rise or anything like that and they started to get it down and i know i couldn't see them but i could hear them which was a game changer I feel like for me of just like you know what I know you're open I'm going to trust that you're open so like I'm going to turn around and throw the ball definitely I was a couple more clips to get through one more on passing a couple on on your defense um this one too I think is just like like we've talked about with patience in general um I think looking at I mean it blends everything we talked about together right like being a mismatch playing out of pick and roll being a post-up option like you kind of just kind of blend them all together. And I think, again, that's part of what makes your game really fun because being versatile is not just about being able to do things every once in a while. It's about being able to do them all the time. And I think here is just, again, like you have the threat of everything. Like they want to get back because they know you can make that play. You have to get chased over the screen because they know you can shoot. They want to stay attached to you because they know you can drive. Like, and that's just, again, really good stuff. Yeah. I just think I created a mismatch on that one. Um, I was I'm only like six two, and she's like five six. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, a recipe for disaster. <laughs> exactly. Um, well, now, yeah, looking at defense a little bit too. Um, I think one of the things that's so interesting about like obviously just playing at Maryland, it's a lot of switching, like a ton of switching. You guys are probably one of the most switch heavy P five programs. Um, but also playing like a lot of kind of like muckier zones, right? Um, so I feel like a lot of what you have to do is being aware at all at all times. And especially like I think pulling Ohio State is a really good example because that's a team where like every single player on the court can drive and attack. Yeah. Um, so especially like on, you know, handling switch pockets and, and looking at stuff like this, how big is it for you in terms of kind of like reading those things and seeing them and, and being able to handle so many different kinds of options because you're not necessarily just being matched up with anybody? Um, It's just really big to know personnel. I think like obviously Cody wants to drive a lot. Um, You know, if you can get her to take more threes than layups, that's a win in your book. Uh, and obviously she's a phenomenal player can get to the rim with ease. So it's not an easy task just saying, oh, let her shoot threes. Like she's really persistent, very dominant, um, just an overall great player. So I think just that. And then like other players, um, knowing them and their tendencies as well. You know, JC was one of those players on the team that could really do it all. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
so you kind of had to play her honest. But it's honestly just about watching film and knowing people's um, knowing personnel. Yeah, especially because right here too, like one of Ohio. I mean, it's interesting because I think so often people think of Ohio State and they're like, you know, five out team that's going to run a ton of ball screens, but really it's all about their handoffs, right? And I think like they always go to this like gut handoff to try and get people going downhill. So I love your, like, I think I want to ask you about your pickup point here too, because I think obviously it's the, you do a great job of, of containing this, but like knowing that there's a player who can drive as strong as Cody does, like what makes you decide, all right, I want to pick her up closer to the free throw line than trying to meet her at the top of the key. Um, she's like, I said, she's very fast, very explosive. Um, so if I can meet her there and kind of contain her and store there and trust my teammates are in the gap, then, you know, um, we have a pretty high chance of being successful. Definitely. And I think one of the things you do really well in general is like containment, like being able to do like playing against multiple different kinds of players. Like, you know how to use your length, you know how to use your footwork and you just do a good job staying in front of people. And then, yeah, last one, I think is just kind of looking at what you can do rotationally a little bit. Right. So you guys play pretty aggressive on this one. Um, I, does any is there anybody in the Big Ten that moves their fat fast feet faster than Bree McDaniel? It's not a lot of people, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, no, love the ability to get back, um, and then just making a play at the rim. I think you're so good at making those rotations low and being able to just be a deterrent down down there, especially like being a team that really didn't play a true center this last year. How did you kind of feel handling some of those matchups and having to like, obviously I'm not saying you played center, but like, you know, it's just kind of like how things can play out defensively. What was that like? And, and having to kind of play through some of that. I, I, I felt like some people were really upset that we didn't play with a true center, but honestly, depending on what type of center you have, it can, in our offense can really harm you. Yeah especially if they're not quick and you know what I'm saying? Because we do switch one through five and we do play a pretty fast game. So like, if you can't keep up, then it's, it's kind of hard to do that. But I think we handled other bigs. It wasn't really bigs that really killed us this year. It was more so agree. the guards, guards. Yeah. The guards getting us and then just, you know, finishing every play with the box out. But I mean, just because you're tall doesn't always mean that you can, do better if that makes sense no absolutely I think like especially whenever I mean just in terms of talking about like how people see the game from above compared to being on the court like I think one of the biggest things that I wish people could recognize is just because somebody is in the post and tall doesn't mean that they have a mismatch like there are a lot of people who can be very tall might be the tallest player on the court in the post but if they don't have a good seal why would I throw them the ball right like exactly. if I know you're gonna brick the layup then you're not getting a that's not a mismatch that's yeah. they have exactly what they want right so it's like you know that's exactly what you're talking about i think so much of it is knowing tendencies and knowing knowing personnel and then to close out again like i think this is to me so much of like again talking about what makes you exciting as a defender is like you're just really good at reading things playing that backside both for steals but also again to make plays you know at the rim in the paint um so much of what you guys do is like if if you do have to play a post like julia Ayrault was really tough for people because she's like moves like a guard but is more of a post um so you guys were fronting a little bit and then just being a comeback over top and force turnover yeah i think a lot of people just struggled with just i'm not really going to try to block it um but i can give you a tough wall up and make you try to finish over me and i'm i'm still pretty long so um just make it a tough contest. I, I can live with the tough too. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. Just to close up with like a couple questions on defense, um, like kind of going off that, especially being a player who just needed to be on the court pretty much at all times this year. Right. How did that change up or did it change up the way that, that you felt you could play defense this year? Cause obviously you, you don't want to get into foul trouble. Um, so how do you kind of, uh, how did you kind of weigh that this past year? Yeah, I was kind of disappointed with my defense this past year. Um, I don't know. I, I, I definitely feel like I let myself down a little bit um, and kind of cruised. Um, obviously, I've, I've picked it back up since, but I mean, I wouldn't say it, it was it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't like what I could be. Um, so, yeah, but I think 
it's all heart. It's all hustle. Um, willing to do it. Um, you know, I've I've accepted the challenge of taking you know the best players this year, and you know, wanting to be the best defender on the team. Um, but it's it's definitely hard when you have to play when you're like the first second option, and then you also have to be one to guard the better players. But um, you know, only the elite of the elite can do it. Um, you know, if it was easy, I'd really do it. Yeah. No, definitely. I think that's a good point because, like, it's just, you know, when you talk about energy expenditure, like having to kind of get to a point where you can figure that out and be at a level where you can do that all the time, that is, uh, it's easier said than done. There's a reason why Alyssa Thomas is like one of the only people in the world who is capable of doing it because um, <laughs> it's very difficult. Um, but yeah, especially like just kind of in talking about your defense as a whole, though, what are the things that you're most excited to to kind of improve upon and show? this season on defense like what are the is there any maybe any like specific areas where you feel like you've uh you've maybe started to see things differently uh this year or, or kind of what 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 this year's gonna look like for you um i'm definitely excited to see you know there's a few things that we're gonna change up um and i'm excited for you guys to get to see and how i get to adapt and you know play a little bit more loose and more free um and i'm just really excited to like you know i'm still gonna be that charge charge magnet but um i'm just really excited about the new things that we've got going on for us and you know it's gonna be a fun year i'm gonna be get to be athletic and be explosive and you know just try to compete at all levels and you know take on any challenge i can definitely well shy i'm really excited to to watch you kind of finish out this this journey obviously got a lot of time before then but um very excited for that. I appreciate your time, of course. Is there anything you want to shout out or mention before we get out of here? Um, don't count the Terps out. <laughs> don't count them out. Absolutely not. Yeah, no time to count the Terps out because that there's just never a good time to count the Terps out. <laughs> well, Shy, again, I appreciate your time to everyone watching. Of course, subscribe if you haven't already. Keep up with all things Maryland women's basketball and enjoy the rest of your day.